YouTube, what's the deal? It's your girl Jahira, and I am back. Hi. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I haven't done kind of a vloggy bit in a while, and I figured now was a good a time as any. I'm already smoking, just for the record. Um, and there will probably be cursing. You should know this up front. There's been something on my mind that I kind of wanted to get out there for a while. And it's not so much about me personally. Um, there is some personal stuff that like, I will get to at some point. But I wanted to come in today and talk to y'all sort of about what place, if any, this the concept of redemption has in our society and I'm gonna give you some backstory because I promise like there's a point to all this so two things have popped up um, kind of in the media in like the past month or so that warranted this conversation in my head the first was something that has been playing out right here on YouTube and the second has come to light more so in mainstream media if you will um, I don't want to mention any names of, of the people who are directly involved. I will leave it to you to ascertain what you will. Um, but the, the first instance um, is of a popular YouTube vlogger um, who got into it with another celebrity. And, um, and some of the more hateful comments that this vlogger has made in the past and by the past I mean years ago has now come to surface and so this vlogger is now being branded um, with a with a title with a moniker if you will and the second situation involves a celebrity who's really on the ver he's he's an actor and a filmmaker who um, is on the verge of releasing this film that I believe is hugely important to um, the American conversation. It's already generating Oscar buzz. Um, it, it's, it's all shaping up to be an incredibly powerful movie, but with the release of this movie, an incident in his past in which he was accused of a crime, a truly disgusting deplorable crime and tried for said crime and ultimately found not guilty has now come to light and he is now being labeled with an adjective as a result of this and again his incident also happened years ago I should preface all of this by saying that in no way am I attempting to excuse or rationalize or justify the actions <clears throat> or potential actions of these people in the least because these things which they are uh, which they have been labeled with are truly vehemently detrimental labels I mean truly just just deplorable like you it's it's despicable on its face and so this is not me trying to explain it away in the least but I just sort of want to talk about um, the power of redemption whether or not it is possible and and if so when do we accept it as possible that something you have said or something that you have done years ago no longer speaks to the person that you are today. I remember there was, um, when, when Oprah was having her, her last season of her um, talk show series, um, she did a lot of sort of like looking back and catching up with some of the more famous audience members or, or, or members that she had on the show, I should say. Um, guests. Yeah, guests. <laughs> So, um, and there's the story of this guy who was just this, I mean, vehement, like, card-carrying racist 
Like, he was, he took the utmost pride in his right racism. Like, pure, I mean, like, country, I, you know, just the whole stereotypical kind of redneck racist kind of thing. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it was. Um, and then his daughter ended up becoming pregnant, and the father of her child was a black man. And so she had a biracial baby. And he said, you know, upon looking at this baby, that, you know, this infant has no idea that I'm a racist. All he knows is that I'm grandpa. And it softened his heart. And it sort of, it, there was an epiphany in that. And so he ended up not only accepting his grandson and purging himself of his racist beliefs, but he later on went on to adopt two black children um, who were in foster care, I believe. And, um, and so you could look at a story like that and, and sort of say, I mean, I, I would say you are no longer a racist. That moniker no longer applies to you. You have been purged from or you have ascended or transcended the, the belief system that lends itself to a racist attitude, you know? Like, okay, you're no longer racist. And I guess my, that's a great example of, 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 the, of what redemption is. You know what I mean? That, that you, can, you can be absolved from certain belief systems or actions that you have had. With the advent of social media, I would say that we're a far less forgiving society than we used to be. And again, this is just my opinion. And in some cases, rightfully so, because with social media comes the, whoops, my phone, comes the ability to see things that may have forever been hidden. You know, things get brought to light all the time. Pictures, uh, videos, confessionals, uh, you know, uh, people's overheard conversations. Real attitudes tend to come to the light now more so than ever before. It's very difficult to be sort of surreptitious in this day and age because Big Brother is watching. So there's that. You know what I mean? But I, I'm just kind of curious as to at what point do we deem someone worthy of forgiveness for actions they may have taken, you know, upwards of a decade ago um, that no longer speak to who that person is now? Um, I don't want to harp on the two media examples that I've given you. But... Um, I'm just curious as to when that happens and sort of how that can happen and and how people are deemed worthy of that happening or not. You know, I, I mean, 10 years ago, I was 27. I was just coming out of <laughs> an extended bullshit relationship that never should have happened. David loves ashes. Previous video, David is the one. Um, never should have lasted as long as it did. It was purely um, me being unable, unable to uh, differentiate between love and habit that offered it the longevity that it had. Um, and, and I was in a really difficult space um, mourning the loss of that relationship despite the fact that I was the one who ended it and kind of just trying to figure out who I was, who I wasn't um, where to go from here you know and now today I have a much more uh, acute sense of myself. I'm in a really amazing functional relationship. I, I have a great sense of autonomy over my own journey, over my own narrative um, that really wasn't present in my late 20s. And, and I feel like some of those decisions that I made back then um, that were really rooted in no self-esteem, I, I have been redeemed of 
you know I have been absolved from and so I can say that I'm not the person that I was 10 years ago um, you know and that's a really light example compared to like being labeled whatever it is that people may have been labeled I mean using the Oprah example that man was labeled a racist he labeled himself a racist now he's not a racist um but but when is that kind of grace or or how is that kind of grace what is the process by which that kind of grace is afforded to other people really is my question and this is not rhetorical i don't have an answer here i'm just curious um as to what your thoughts might be so um I don't know. It's just something I'd like to think about and something I'd like us to think about. And if you have any thoughts on it, please drop it below. I love you and I appreciate you. And that's kind of where I am right now. So wherever you're going, please take my love with you. As always, y'all, one love. Thanks for hanging out.